Here are 31 things to do before the Teal Mask DLC in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. And let's start with this guy over here. Now, Diplin is confirmed to be an evolution of Applin, and the best way to get yourself a shiny Diplin as soon as you start the DLC is to immediately grab yourself a shiny Applin from the base game. Now, in order to do that, it's really easy. There's an auto farming area that you can shiny hunt Applins. You can actually probably get a bunch of them and bring them over and use them as trade bait. So what you're going to do is first go ahead and head over to the Pokemon Center in East Province Area 3. Once you're there, just go ahead and pop a dragon sandwich. What you're going to need for this is two Salty Herba Mysticas and an avocado. That's all I use, and I know there are other recipes, but feel free to comment the alternate recipe, but that's going to give you the shiny boosted chances of seeing dragon type Pokemon. And since Applin is a shiny dragon Pokemon, you should be set. Go ahead and enter the Tag Tree Thicket. Once you're in the Tag Tree Thicket, follow the road all the way down. You should be seeing Applins in the trees as you are passing by. What you want to do is head over towards the Team Star base area right over here. So you should turn around and see the Team Star base. And in front of you, you should see two trees. Place yourself by that area. And all you need for this is a Pokemon that can basically float. So basically a Pokemon that can be in the air. Kind of like a Solomon, Charmander, things like that. I use Solomon's for this example. So what you want to do is you see the Applin up in the tree over here. You're going to want to ram into the tree that Applin's going to drop. And you're going to back up all the way into this area over here by this tree. So you want to keep enough of a distance and you want to make sure your Pokemon doesn't return to you. Then send out your Pokemon and it'll start auto battling all the Applins. You can see it's constantly going to keep doing this and you have a 30 minute timer. If you don't want to waste any Salty Herba Mysticas, you can do this right in front of the area. Save before you waste them. That way you can reload your game and reuse it over and over again. And you can just sit there until you get a shiny Applin. Now when a shiny Applin shows up, your Pokemon's going to run back to you because it can't obviously KO shiny Pokemon. Pokemon. Thank you, Pokemon, for keeping that safety feature in check. And when your Pokemon returns back to you, you're then going to be able to see that shiny in the tree. And there it is. There's my shiny Applin waiting for me. So then go ahead and ram the tree one more time. It's going to drop down. And then I got my shiny Applin. Uh, literally, while I was recording this video, I threw my quick pull at it. And this is the one that I'm going to bring into the DLC and evolve right into a Diplin. And most likely, the evolution method is going to be the same as the previous ones use a sweet apple or a tart apple. They probably have something called a carrot caramelized apple at this point hence why it's probably going to be a golden color or it just might be the green color we'll see when the dlc comes out one of the big ones is make sure to complete the entire pokedex that way you can go to jacques who is located in the school and get yourself a shiny charm shiny rates are one out of 4096 but if you do get the shiny charm your chances are going to be one out of 2048 so make sure to grab that now, I know everyone is not up to the task to shiny hunting every Pokemon in the game, but it's actually really easy in Scarlet and Violet. And I even made it easier by creating an entire playlist full of every single shiny hunting spot for every single Pokemon in the game. And it is organized by the Pokemon type. So you can go ahead and check out that playlist to find any shiny Pokemon that you may need. It's going to be very important to hoard a bunch of Herba Mystica for the DLC. You're going to be needing that in order to shiny hunt. So I suggest going out there and taking down a bunch of five and six star raids. That way you can gather all that stuff so you can make yourself some nice sandwiches as soon as the DLC arrives. So that you can follow along with my shiny hunting guides that are going to be dropping. Now it's typical for me to say that you should complete the main story of the game. That means beating all the gym leaders, that means defeating all the Titan Pokemon, and that means completing all the Team Star bases and going into Area Zero. But surprisingly, the Teal Mask actually doesn't require you to complete any of that before going in. It's just advice to beat the game ahead of time. But if you're a new player, you can actually access the Teal Mask as soon as you begin the treasure hunt in the original game. But in order to access part two, which is the next DLC after the Teal Mask, you're gonna have to complete the Teal Mask and the base game. So just keep that in mind and finish the game just so you can be ready for part two of the DLC. Now I know this is obvious, but you should probably buy the DLC before the DLC, but there's something you should look out for to not make a mistake. When you go to your Nintendo eShop, go under search and then go to downloadable content, you'll see two DLCs. You'll see the hidden treasure here that's for Violet and the hidden treasure here that's for Pokemon Scarlet. Make sure you purchase the correct one according to your game. I am currently playing Pokemon Scarlet, so I've purchased the Pokemon Scarlet one. If you get the DLC for Pokemon Scarlet, you'll be able to get these outfits. They're not that crazy. And if you get Pokemon Violet, you'll get these outfits, which I think are better than the Scarlet ones, in my opinion. 
And if you purchase the DLC before October 31st, 2023, you'll be able to get yourself a special Hisuian Zoroark that knows an unusual move in the game. Now, another thing that I suggest you do is try to max out on your money. Now, there is a non-glitch method in order to do this without using any hacks or cheats. It's simply going to be by doing the Academy Ace Tournament that is located in the school. And I've created a complete video on this topic to show you how you can use a turbo controller and stand in front of this guy inside of the school building and just press A once and let the turbo controller keep pressing A over and over again in order for you just to keep farming money and running through trainers. Now in the video I created, I use Chi Yu, but you have other options like Sylveon with Moonblast and many other more powerful Pokemon and strategies which are in that video comment section. So feel free to check that one out. It'll also show you how to grab the amulet coin so you can even get more money while you are auto farming. Something you want to make sure to do is buy out all the competitive items you need from Deli Bird Presence. These items will help you so much in battle and also if you're learning VGC or just want to do some singles battles with your friend, why not overpower your Pokemon even more by giving them their proper items. You can also purchase breeding items that are really important like the Destiny Knot to pass down IVs, the Everstone which is going to be really important for regional form breeding, and while you're at the shopping spree why don't you buy out all the cosmetics in the game. Delibird Presence has a bunch of phone cases for sale. You can also go around to all the various different shops and buy out all the drip in the game. I know Scarlet and Violet really doesn't have mu that much drip but just having a little hat accessory, different colors, shoes and gloves all make a little bit of a difference right? Probably not but you should just get it that way you don't have to ever worry about it. Now there are certain forms and Pokemon that you can only get via Pokemon Go and then transferring them to Pokemon Home and then to Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. An example of this is you should try to get roaming form Gimmigul. This is the Gimmigul that is not in the treasure chest. You can achieve this by going into your Poke Portal and also opening up your Pokemon Go app and connecting your Nintendo Switch to your Pokemon Go account. Once you do a successful connection, you'll be able to get a coin bag in your Pokemon Go. Activate that, a Gimme Go will pop up, you can catch it, and then all you have to do is just transfer it over to Pokemon Home, and then you can bring it into your Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, and this is what it's going to look like in the game. Not only that, but did you know that Fue Coco, Sprigatito, and Quaxley can only be caught in a Pokeball? But if you play Pokemon Go and they do spawn, you can catch them in Great Balls and Ultra Balls. That is the only other Pokeball you can catch them in which makes for good trade bait you can bring them over to your game breed them and get a ton of great ball and ultra ball starters for paldea and then trade them to other people which we'll also be doing in the discord and here they are in my pokemon game in their different pokeballs so this is something cool that you should probably do before the dlc Having Pokemon Go also connected to your Nintendo Switch can help out a lot if you have specific postcards from different areas. You get postcards by spinning on Pokemon Go stops. If you're going to different places in the world, make sure to collect those because you can activate different ones in the game that'll give you different Vivilon spawns in your game. And you can find these by going to the Team Star Fairy Base area in order to get them. Now another trick to get all the Vivilon forms is well the Discord. We have people from all over the world playing and we have a chat where people will spawn them in their game for you. You could just hop and join and connect the world and get the form you need. There are a lot of Pokemon in Scarlet and Violet that have multiple forms and you should probably get them now in the base game. The first one is going to be Three Family Mousehold. This one pretty much just lost a kid and the Three Family one is basically a 1% chance when you evolve Tandem out. You can go over to the Pokemon League area and go ahead and hunt them. At level 25, they will evolve and you will get a mouse hole. Hopefully, you can grab the three segmented family. And if you're really lucky, you'll be able to get a shiny one that can evolve into a three family mouse hole. Now, the next one is going to be located in area zero. This is basically going to be Dunsparce evolving into three segmented form the Dunsparce. Now, unlike mouse hole, you can actually find three family mouse hold randomly in a raid den. But three segmented form to Dunsparce is not found anywhere in the game and the only way for you to get it is to evolve a Dunsparce into the Dunsparce. And that's also going to be a 1 out of 100 chance. The best way for you to do this is to eat a normal sandwich down in area 0 at the bottom floor and just look for the shiny Dunsparce. There's a little secret rock section that you can keep going back and forth on. I have an entire video by the way showing my entire hunt of how I got the 1% shiny Pokemon. So it's pretty interesting if you want to check it out. Another Pokemon I actually hunted in that video was Tatsugiri and Tatsugiri naturally has three forms that you should probably get. 
the orange, the pink one, and the yellow one. Now, if you want to get all the tatsugiri for a full sushi platter, the three shiny ones, you're probably going to want to have a shiny dragon sandwich, which you're going to then get a brown looking orange shiny tatsugiri, an orange tatsugiri with stripes on it, and then a white tatsugiri. So good luck if you want to hunt all those down. You can also try to hunt down all the forms of Squawkabilly. There's a green one, there's a blue one, a yellow one, and a white one. You can find these pretty much in between Artazone area and Lavincia. So you can go between those areas. There's a nice little secret spot right by Lavincia where you can go in and out of the town and the Squawkabillies will spawn there. If you want to go for the shiny, you're going to have to look for the little pink puff on its head and that would make you have to hunt a total of eight Squawkabillies. So if you're up to that challenge, go for it. But if you just want the regular forms, it's going to be a pretty easy task. Another interesting one with that has two forms is going to be Tauros, except it's going to be in Pokemon Scarlet where you get the fire one and in Pokemon Violet where you get that one. Now, don't worry if you need these forms and you're, you have a lot of one and you're trying to get another one, you can go to the Discord we have and trade over there. Now, this part might be a little tedious and there's a few things that you should do to organize your life before the DLC. I say this all the time to myself, and sometimes even I have a hard time doing the following. Go into your Pokemon boxes and make sure to clear out your eggs by just hatching them. Sometimes I have so many eggs just left over and you just want to get those Pokemon hatched because you never know, you just might have a shiny Pokemon waiting for you. Organize your decks so that you can find whatever Pokemon you may need at any time. Speaking of organizing, you should also go into your Pokemon home and try to organize that. I'm also guilty of not being able to organize my Pokemon home and even though I say every single time to myself, I'm going to fix this, I'm going to make the best organized Pokemon home decks, I slack with it. But you know what? Make your life easier by slowly doing little projects over time like Gen 1, Gen 2, and so forth. This is my Gen 1 box. I organize it like this. I like to put all the evolutions of a certain Pokemon with them, as well as the regional forms, even cross evolutions. Organizing makes it so much easier when you're looking for the right Pokemon. This is just a bonus tip, but you should hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you can be the first ones to see anything happening for the DLC. Another thing that you can do is transfer in all compatible Pokemon with the game after the Pokemon Home update. Here on the screen is a list of all the Pokemon that you can currently transfer in the game. When the Teal Mask does come out on September 13th, you'll be able to transfer even more Pokemon that'll get updated. And a good rule to keep in mind is if there is a Pokemon in the game that has a regional form, you can 100% bring that Pokemon in. For example, Vulpix is going to be in the Teal Mask. That means when Pokemon Home compatibility is there, you can bring in Alolan Vulpix into the game. With transferring compatible Pokemon also comes the issue of regional form breeding. And what you're going to need is the Everstone. You can purchase this from Deli Bird Presents. It's pretty cheap and easy to afford. And you, what you're going to do is go ahead and put that Everstone on the regional variant you want to get. So for example, if I had a Wooper breeding with a Paldean Wooper and I gave the Everstone to the Blue Wooper, then the babies will all come out to be blue whoopers because I gave it the Everstone. If you don't have an Everstone, they're just going to come out to be the regional variant because we are in that area. It's going to be a Paldean whooper. You can use this trick when breeding in the DLC because they also have the Hisuian Basculin in the DLC. So go ahead and try that with some of those Pokemon there. Something really important that you're going to need for breeding is going to be a ditto. Specifically, getting a 5 IV or 6 IV ditto is going to be really important. Not only that, for passing down IVs, but you're going to need a Masuda ditto. And Masuda dittos are basically you having a ditto from a different region. I've created an entire Discord to help you with that. You can go ahead and join our Discord and ask around and get yourself a Masuda ditto. Also, we have an entire video that talks about the ditto, so feel free to watch that to be more educated on that topic. It's going to be very important once you complete the game that you catch your corresponding box legendary Pokemon. If you have Pokemon Scarlet, you'll have Coridon, and if you have Pokemon Violet, you'll have an extra Maridon. To get these Pokemon, just make sure to go down all the way to area zero at the bottom. And over here on this platform, you will see the Pokemon there. Make sure to save beforehand and get into battle and catch it. And please don't knock it out like I did. You're going to also want to be able to get all the four secret legendary Pokemon that were hidden behind these shrines in the game. These include Tien Pao, King Lu, 
Wu Qian, and Qi Yu. In order to do this, you just have to collect a bunch of stakes that are in the game. For those who haven't done that, I've linked a website that will give you all the map locations in order to get that. You can find that in the description below. Something that you should also do is try to grab as many TMs as possible in the game. These are found in little gold Pokeballs scattered throughout all of Paldea, as well as auto battling Pokemon to get their material drops in order for you to craft them. You can craft these at the station where the Pokemon Center is and try to get as many as possible done that way you have access to as many moves as you can because the DLC is also going to be introducing even more TMs. Having all these moves available to teach your Pokemon is going to be very beneficial for you. This one is a little time sensitive. So if you can, please redeem your Mew by September 18th, 2023. All you have to do is go to the mystery gift section and type in get your Mew, except the O is a zero. Almost everyone's Mew that you get is going to be different with different move set, different Terra type, different nature. So let me know what Mew you got. And it's always good to have a mythical Pokemon come with you on your adventure into a DLC because the Mew is low level. Now, there are many ways that players will be entering the DLC and deciding how they're going to go through it. Since the prerequisite is not beating Scarlet and Violet, there's many ways you can approach this game. You can start by going and breeding an entirely new team of level one Pokemon and then walking into the teal mask and see what can be done when you're there. As of this video, I'm not sure what the levels of the Pokemon will be when you encounter them in the teal mask, but hey, I've seen people beat Pokemon games with level one Pokemon, and it's probably fun to start an entirely new game with just some level one Pokemon. Maybe some people out there might go for a full on starter team and destroy the teal mask. Now, some people might want to create the most overpowered baby Pokemon in the game, and that's why I created the ultimate breeding guide for you. You could have overpowered Pokemon with like six IVs, the strongest moves in the game. Just really cool stuff. I have that video linked for you in the description, but you should definitely check that out if you want to go in really overpowered. Speaking of overpowered, you should probably also EV train those baby Pokemon. That way they can not only be powerful with IVs via breeding, but be powerful via EVs in their training and they'll be unstoppable during that. I actually have an entire EV training guide as well out there for you. You know exactly which Pokemon to knock out if you want to work the hard way, or you could just go to Chansey Supplies and get the vitamins you need in order to do it quick. It's all in that video, so I'll link that one as well. Now, there are also gonna be some people out there who are going to want to completely steamroll the DLC. And in order to do that, you can go ahead and level up your Pokemon to, well, level 100. This is easily accomplished by going and beating five gyms in the game and getting the lucky egg that you can attach to your Pokemon. After that, you're gonna to wanna to head over all the way north to where the Team Star Fairy Base is, and in that area is where you're going to encounter a ton of chances up there. Now, in order to increase the amount of chances in there, you're going to want to pop a normal sandwich. By eating the normal sandwich, that'll cause the spawns of chances to increase a lot more. Then you can go ahead, fight a bunch of them and keep destroying them until you get yourself up there in levels and you eventually will reach level 100 and you can probably destroy anything you want in the teal mask. Seriously, it's, it's a lot of fun. If you want to watch that full video, that's also linked in the description. All right, what are you waiting for? Get to work, subscribe, and I'll see you in the DLC.